So good Shabbos, everyone. So the story is told that a man was coming out of the synagogue one day, and as always, the rabbi was standing at the door, shaking hands as the congregation departed. He grabbed this man, the rabbi, and he grabbed him by the hand and he pulled him aside. And the rabbi said to this man, you need to join the army of God. The man replied, I'm already in the army of God, rabbi. The rabbi questioned, how can that be? I don't see you except for Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. The man whispered back, I'm in the secret service. <laughs> now you may feel like me, but there are too many, too many of our fellow Jews, too many of our fellow congregants who are in the secret service. And maybe there's something we can do that can help get them out of the secret service and into the regular army. There's something interesting in this week's Torah portion. It's a part of the Passover story. We've started the book of Exodus. We're in the second Torah portion. And we remember when Moses goes to Pharaoh, and we all know that Moses says to Pharaoh, let my people go. But we often forget that Moses doesn't stop there. He says to Pharaoh, let my people go so we can go into the wilderness and worship God for three days. Now, why would Moses say this? Why would he not just say, let my people go so we can stop being slaves and find our freedom in our land, the land of milk and honey? Why does he ask for three days to go worship God in the wilderness? The rabbis give many answers. One possible answer is maybe he's trying to trick Pharaoh. Maybe Pharaoh wouldn't let them go to be free, but maybe Pharaoh would let them go worship for just three days and they would come back. But there's a better answer, one that I think makes more sense. Maybe God instructed Moses to ask for three days because Moses, God thought that by Moses asking for this, after three days, three days of freedom, the people would appreciate what it means to truly be free. And the people would not go back. They'd be done with the slavery. And they would want to go on and march to their freedom. It wouldn't take just one day, it would take three days. I recently read a story about a millennial, a young adult, who hadn't joined a shul yet. But in this New Year's, she made a New Year's resolution that she was going to visit every synagogue in her city one time and find if a synagogue spoke to her. She would go to a Reform temple, then a conservative one, then an Orthodox one, then another Reform one, many Friday nights in a row. She would go once to each synagogue. And if one synagogue spoke to her, she would start going more and more. That was her New Year's resolution. And while I appreciate the fact that she wants to try different synagogues in her community, I wonder if one time is enough. Maybe it takes at least three times if not more, to truly appreciate what a synagogue like ours and so many other great synagogues in this city can truly offer Jews, our fellow Jews in this community. It's not just one service and, you know, it was okay. The canter was great. That rabbi, I'm not so sure. <laughs> it doesn't take just one program. It doesn't take just one event. It takes several, at least three if not more, to truly feel at home, to start to get to know people, to feel part of the community, to get to know the rabbis and the cantor, and most importantly, to get to know the fellow congregants, to really feel like part of the great congregational family. It takes at least three times. And so perhaps that's my wish tonight. Perhaps that's what we all need to wish for our precious new members and all of our fellow Jews in the city of Houston who either belong to a shul but rarely go or don't belong to a synagogue at all. Don't come just once and say, I tried it and it wasn't for me. Come many times first. Really get to know the people. See if people come up and, and introduce themselves to you. See if you're moved by a prayer or by a program or by a service or a Devar Torah or by a sermon. Give it a real try. And then you may not want to be in the secret service anymore. But instead, you may want to join a wonderful congregational family like ours. We're truly blessed here at Beth Yashurn 
the last couple years, we had had many, many families, over 100 new families each year join. And it's because of our wonderful leadership, because of so many of you. And first and mo foremost was our wonderful membership director, Mindy Stern. Mindy, will you stand for just a moment? Many of you have gotten to know Mindy, whether you're a new member or not, but Mindy does so much. She welcomes our new members. She makes them feel at home. She relates to them, and she makes the membership process so nice, so welcoming, and she really is a great person for them to first meet when they join our congregational family. So tonight, again, as we did last year, Mindy asked, could we have a Friday night where we could welcome our new members to celebrate with them and to bless them as they've joined Bethia Shern. So tonight, I want to ask all our new members to rise for just a moment. All our new members that are here tonight. <laughs> remain standing, remain standing at your seats for just a moment. And the cantor first wants to welcome you with words of Shekhianu. Words of blessing, words of thanks, words of welcome. Baruch Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Shechayanu Bekimanu Behigianu Lazman Hazeh Shechayanu Bekimanu Vehigianu Lazman Hazeh Lazman Hazeh Lazman Hazeh Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the Universe, who's kept us in life, sustained us, and allowed us to reach this special time, in this special time for us, and we hope for you for many good years to come. And let us say, Amen. And please remain standing as we ask this prayer upon all of you. May it be your will, Adonai, our God and God of our ancestors, to grant our portion in your Torah. And may we be disciples of Aaron the Kohen, loving peace and pursuing peace. May we, as Congregation Beth Yashurn, welcome you and your families hoping that you will only make us a better and more holy community. And let us say, Amen. And now I'm going to ask everyone to rise as we recite the words, O say Shalom, with our arms around each other. O say Shalom, O say Shalom bim Roma. Uya ase shalom aleinu, shalom aleinu, aleinu mi al kol Yisrael, ve'imru amen. Aleinu mi al kol Yisrael, ve'imru amen. Uya ase shalom. Shalom aleinu ve'al kol Yisrael Uya ase shalom aleinu ve'al kol Yisrael Ose shalom, ose shalom bimromau Uya ase shalom aleinu Shalom aleinu, aleinu mi'al kol Yisrael ve'imru amen. 